topic for today is God protects his own. Y'all hear me? God protects his own. See, a lot of people are worried and concerned about all the conditions of the world. They have every, you know, every year they bring up something to scare people, to have people almost a nervous wreck. But you know what? This is a time when you got to put your trust in God. You cannot, every time something comes along, every time the coronavirus or any other, any other virus, the, the, uh, it, it's been viruses all along. You cannot panic. What you have to do is learn to trust in the Most High God. Y'all do know that we serve a God who can do all things for fail. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Do you have God deep down in your heart? Do you have God down in your soul? That's what counts. See, God will protect you. You know, I back up everything that I say with the Bible. You know, back when the children of Israel had to take a captive by the Egyptians. Y'all know the story because I told you the story before. Remember when they were taken captive? God brought all of these plagues upon the land because Pharaoh's heart had been hardened. His heart was hardened and he would not let the children of Israel go. He disobeyed a direct order. God had told Moses to tell them, Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not obey God. And because he did not obey God, God sent ten plagues on the land of Egypt. You know, this coronavirus is just a plague. Y'all do know that, right? You know what a plague is? It's a disease. A deadly, dreadful disease. This is what this coronavirus is. But I'm here to tell you that God will protect who? He will protect his own. All those plagues that hit the land of Egypt, there was a little town in the midst of the land of Egypt called the land of Goshen. None of those plagues affected those people because they were obedient servants of the Most High God. They were God's chosen people. And I'm here to tell you today that the same thing that happened then can happen now. God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Just like he protected those people, he will protect you. Now, let me go, let me go into the Bible. First of all, I want you to open up your Bibles and turn to the book of Exodus. The first plague that God sent onto the land of Egypt. And I'm going to tell you how each and every one of these plagues relate to what's going on today. The first plague that God sent on the land of Egypt, he turned the water into blood. Exodus chapter 7, verses 17 and 18. And if you don't have your Bible, you can follow along with me up here on the PowerPoint. Always come ready just in case somebody didn't bring their Bible. And it reads as follows. Said the Lord. By this you shall know and recognize and acknowledge that I am God. See, sometimes God will allow things to happen to us and things to happen in society just to let you know that he's God. Amen. See, you know, it's almost like a child. Any parents ever experienced you tell your child something and they don't obey until they bust their head up against the wall? Right. Yes. That's right. I think we've all experienced that from time to time. Yeah. Well, see, God had to send these plagues just to let Pharaoh and the Egyptians know that I'm God. Right. I am the Lord. Besides me and above me, there is none of I am the Lord. Look, with the staff in my hand, I will strike the water in the night, and it shall be turned to blood. The fish in the Nile will die, and the Nile will become vile, and the Egyptians will not be able to drink water. And what's happening in the world today? Y'all remember that Flint situation? Yeah. Yeah. All of those people were made sick. Mm -hmm. Some were deformed and some even died because of that impure water. But guess what? That water runs down to Detroit. This water that we're drinking is not safe. That tap water? Water. Not good. It ain't good. Oh, man. It ain't good. Oh, I'm, I'm here to tell you all. It ain't good. See, last year, every now and then, they go around to the schools 
to check the, the water, to see about the, the uh, lead index in the water, and the bacteria and the impurities in the water. Well, when they checked all of Detroit Public Schools' waters, all of the water was deemed unsafe. We had signs up in all the schools about all the water fountains, do not drink the water. Do not drink the water, you can only use it to wash your hands with. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute now, if the water is unsafe in the schools, isn't it unsafe in our homes? The water comes from the same reservoir. So how come the citizens of Detroit was not made aware? But I did tell my members about it. Amen. I told them don't drink that fossil water and it's still not good to drink. You know why? Number one, most of the pipes are old and they're rusty. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the pipes that the water come through? Those pipes are old. They're rusty and they have lead in those pipes. And lead damages the brain. You know, sometimes the children, being a school teacher for over 30 years, the children sometimes can't help when they were acting out, acting bad. A lot of them had lead in their system and the parents didn't know it. Lead brings about behavioral disorders, mental disorders. It affects the brain. A lot of these children who have been diagnosed with that ADHD, ADHD, whatever you call it, all of that come from lead poisoning. And nobody's informing our people about it. It's almost like a genocide thing. They want us all to be dead. But I'm here to tell you, when God gives me the knowledge, I'm going to give it to y'all. Stop drinking the tap water. And I'm going to tell you this too. You know, we used to think that we could boil the water for five minutes, Uh and it takes out all the impurities. It does take out the impurities and the bacteria, but guess what? It doesn't take out the lead. You know what happens? It makes the lead more concentrated. It makes the lead more powerful. Yes. Yes. So don't drink that fossil water. I did research on it. I'm going to tell you, before I get out here and tell you anything, trust me, I'm going to do my research. And I was researching about this lead. And they said the hot water makes it more potent, more concentrated. It makes it stronger. Now the hot boiling water does take out certain bacteria. Not all of them. Certain ones. But see, now I see why some of the kids are so disorderly, can't sit down or hiked up. They have land in their system. And the people don't even know it. They automatically put them on this, what do you call that? I call it a kitty man, a heroin. That's what I call it. When they put the kids on that slow down stuff. Everything you 
in your mouth, you need to say a prayer on it first. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret that I do with my, back, with my fruit, because I make fruit smoothies all the time. I soak them in vinegar water. You know, vinegar is a purifier. Soak your fruit in vinegar water. Soak it. It'll take out some of those impurities. White. Yeah, the white vinegar. Yeah. Soak it in vinegar water. That's why I do it all my fruit. Oh. Agriculture, pesticides, herbicides, and all forms, I call these all suicides, <laughs> have poisoned the water supply. Amen, Their poison is sprayed. See, oh they sprayed yeah. the plants and stuff with these herbicides and pesticides. And guess what? We didn't turn eat that stuff. Oh, so you see why all these cancers and all these and when I was when I was growing up, these kids aging, we didn't have that many people sick. Okay, let's look at plague number two. All of that just came from plague number one. Oh, wow. Plague number two. The frogs. The, frogs. the second uh, plague. God sent an enormous amount of frogs on the land. What do frogs represent? Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 8, 3. 3 to 12, I think it should have been. Revelations, chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. These unclean spirits were like frogs. Y'all know there's a whole lot of evil spirits in the world. Y'all yes, know that, right? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. 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 And just as frogs affected every part of life in Egypt, the unclean spirits will affect every life on earth. Oh, no. Yes. These unclean spirits will come out of the mouth of the dragon. Who's the great dragon? Satan. Satan. The devil. The devil. Out of the mouth of the beast. I'm in the book of Revelations now. See, if I been, you know when I was growing up in church? The ministers told us don't read the book of Revelation. Yes, Remember that? Yeah. But see, we're living in the book of Revelations now. Right. I don't know why they used to tell us don't read the book of Revelation. Yeah. God Almighty, these unclean spirits will come out of the mouth of the dragon, Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, the savage beast nature, and out of the false prophet, those who falsely serve and speak of God, but are antichrist. Y'all remember Jim Jones? Y'all yeah. remember him? Yeah. One of the biggest frauds in the world. Yeah. One of the biggest frauds in the whole world. Yeah, he made him drink that poison and killed a whole, whole army of people. That, that was a, a false prophet. Their goal is to bring forth the final conflict of man. Today there's a great uh, push for many nations to obtain nuclear weapons. You know, it used to be a time when the United States and Russia were the only ones with the nuclear weapons. Now all of these little countries are getting nuclear weapons. What if everybody disarmed their nuclear weapon? You ever think about that? But see, that's what the devil wants. You know, the devil is an evil force that is hovering over the whole world. Why do you think these people are able to commit such heinous crimes? See, the devil will whisper in your ear to do such and such. But see, you can't entertain it. You can't entertain it. He's going to whisper in everybody's ear. He whispered to Jesus. Jesus threw the word on him. See, the devil can't stand in the word. That's why he don't like the people to go to church. Because you're going to hear the word. He definitely don't like them to come up in unity mission. Because I'm going to hear the word. Amen. I'm going to get away. I don't care how mad the devil gets. See, I'll tell my daddy on the devil what you say. Amen. God has all power in his hands. See, the devil's goal is to bring forth the final conflict of man. And like I said, today there's a push for many nations to obtain these nuclear weapons. Down. The third plague upon Egypt was lice. And the Lord said to Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rock and smite the dust of the land that it may, it may become life throughout all the land of Egypt. I'm in the book of Exodus now, chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became life in man and in beast. 
all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. We know how insects have affected our everyday life. The more we spray with pesticides, the more harmful that stuff becomes to our system. See how all this stuff works? How it all relates to what's going on now? They spray the plants, they spray the vegetation, they spray our vegetables with these herbicides and pesticides. And see, the little bugs, the lice, bugs, whatever, they're like humans. Like, I'm gonna use a crackhead, for example. You know, they might start off with a little bit of crack, but then they might get immune to that crack. Then they have to use a little bit more crack, right? Well, see, the bugs are the same way. They spray the plants with pesticides. They, their body get used to that. Then they have to spray with more pesticides. And guess what? We're eating that stuff. We're eating that. That's why so many sicknesses and diseases today. It's the food that we eat. And see, some of that we can help and some of it we can't. You know, we can take some precaution measures, okay, by getting the proper water. These vegetables, the ones that you can soak in that vinegar water, do that. Because vinegar is a purifier. The fourth plague that came upon Egypt was swarms of flies. Exodus chapter 8, verse 21. Else, if thou will not let my people go. See, even after all of that, Pharaoh's heart was still hard. And he still wouldn't let God's people go. So God sent the fourth plague. Exodus chapter 8, verse 21. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses. And, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground. This will come upon all the oxen. See, it was oxen back then, but now we have what? Cows, we have pigs. The cows provide our beef. The pigs provide the pork, the swine, okay? These animals are diseased. Y'all know that, so you gotta watch what you eat. They're diseased, all of them are. Number one, they're injecting these animals with stuff to make them bigger. You know, it ain't about our health anymore. It's about the dollar bill, y'all know that? That's, right, that's, that's all these people are concerned about. They're not concerned about our health. They'll inject anything into these animals to make them bigger. Because when they weigh them, the heavier they are, the more money they get. In today's world, we all know what happened with the mad cow disease. How many of y'all remember that? The bird flu, anybody remember that? Thousands upon thousands of cows and chickens were slaughtered to keep disease and pestilence from spreading. Anthrax hit the halls. Let's go down to the last one, because now I'm getting to my final point. Now, brothers and sisters, we're dealing with the coronavirus. Oh, no. That's what we're dealing with now. And this virus originated from animals in China. And somehow the animals infected the people. It's a people's disease now. Now, brothers and sisters, one thing, the reason why I brought up all these plagues, again, is to let you know that nothing new, there's nothing new under the sun. What happened then is happening now. But guess what? God spared his own people. The land of Goshen was a land, a little small land, almost like Highland Park in the midst of Detroit. You, you understand what I'm saying? It was a small land in the midst of Egypt. None of those people were affected by any of these plagues. That's because they were God's people. They were obedient servants of God. So if, brothers and sisters, you know, I don't worry about all this stuff. I do everything that I can humanly do, and then I, I, I trust that God is going to do the rest. And see, that's what you have to do. I'm not trying to send panic mode out to any of you. I'm just trying to teach you the ways of God. Teach you how to be safe. Because see, if you listen to the news, you'll be on, what's the pills for nerves? You be on nerve pills. <laughs> you build every other thing. Man, these doctors, they have you all psychotroped up. And you y'all never learn to trust in God. I'm telling you, you know what? I'm gonna share this little testimony with you all. I had a checkup. 
uh, this past week, one day this past week, and uh, the nurse came in and, and she took my blood pressure. And when she took my blood pressure, she said, Ooh, your blood pressure is real low. I'm thinking, oh, black people blood pressure be way high. And after she, let me tell you what I did. After she left out of the room, I said, I rebuke you low blood pressure in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I kid you not, she came back in for some reason and retook my blood pressure and it was back up. And God did it. And she said, I don't know what made your pressure go back up. She said, maybe because you got up and threw something away in the garbage can. She just didn't understand what happened. I said, no, no, no. Maybe because I know God. Maybe because I know how to rebuke that devil. Rebuke him. I rebuke that so I said, I rebuke low blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Good God Almighty. So you got to learn to rebuke these things. Don't accept everything the doctor tell you. Don't you know God is more powerful than any kind of blood pressure? He's, he's, he's bigger than that. Bigger and better. So go to the next slide. Will God's people suffer these plagues? What's the next word that I have in real big bold letters? No. no. I want everybody here to say, I rebuke you, coronavirus. I in the name of Jesus. Will God's people suffer these plagues? No. God isolated Goshen from all the other parts of Egypt. There was no death or disease in Goshen, which was God's protected place. All right, listen. This is what God said to do. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commands, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord. Who's bigger than the Lord? For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And that came out of Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Go to the next slide. God promises he will bring none of these diseases or plagues, including coronavirus, on his people that has been brought up upon this land. But this is not an open end guarantee. There's a, this is an if statement. It comes with an if. Now don't think you're going to automatically be protected. It comes with an if. He promised to protect you what? If. if. Yeah, Let's see, if what? If we will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight, hear his commands, and keep all his statutes, then and only then can we expect him to keep his end of the promise. He further indicates, now this is in Deuteronomy here, the next one, Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. This is a promise from God. One thing I've learned about God, he's, he honors his word. Yeah. If, that's why I love Psalm 91 so much. Because mm -hmm. everything is covered up under Psalms 91. It even talks about it in verse 3. Psalms 91 verse 3 and verse 4 talk about the pestilence. He'll protect you from the pestilence. What's the uh, pestilence? Disease. Yeah. What's included in these diseases? Coronavirus. That's and blue blur bubonic plague and all these other plagues. All of that's included. That's right. If we fulfill God's word, we can be free from worldly diseases. What to do from a spiritual perspective? The first thing you want to do is always stay prayerful. And trust in God. <clears throat> See, your prayer without faith is dead. Mm -hmm. You got to believe what you're yeah. asking God for. Read Psalm 91. It's a scripture for protection. 
And it talks about protecting you from pestilence. Two of the verses, three and four, talk about the pestilence. You're covered and protected from everything with Psalms. for watching The Power of Praise. My name is Dr. Savina Lachelle Taylor and I am the pastor of Unity Mission Church. If you would like to support our ministry and help to keep our broadcast on the air, a broadcast that is viewed by a multitude of people, a broadcast that have touched the lives of so many, please send donations to our website, unitymissionchurch.com or unitymissionchurch.org. You may also send checks or money orders made payable to Unity Mission Church to our address 1335 Oakman Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan 48238. When you support this ministry, brothers and sisters, you are actually assisting us with supporting the community. We assist with feeding the hungry. We support families with social and economic needs. We provide jobs. We provide a multitude of after school programs. Our theme is unity in the community. You may send your donations to our website, unitymissionchurch.com or unitymissionchurch.org or you may send your checks or money orders payable to Unity Mission Church to 1335 Oakman Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. We all so cordially invite each and every one of you to our Sunday morning service, which begins at 11 a.m. Here you can truly witness the power of the Most High God showing up and showing out. We thank you in advance for your support and may God continue to bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, if you are looking for a great dentist, if you're